Hey guys, Mike Giles here from Black Knight Studios and today I'm going to show you how to make buttons in Photoshop. So we're going to go down to Photoshop, click File, New, and we're going to make sure our width is about 300 and our height is about 100. Our resolution should be 72 if you're making it for the web, and RGB color, and 8-bit is fine. So click OK. And we're going to press F to expand our workspace. We're going to hold down the space bar and click with our mouse and just move this over just a little bit just to get it in the middle and so that we can uh, feel comfortable with where it is. Now I'm going to go down to my shape tool, just click and hold on it, and we're going to go over here and make sure that we let go on the rounded rectangle tool. Now we're going to um, select the color that we want this shape to be, so we're going to just double click right on, uh, I actually have the blue in the background here, so I'm going to move that to the front by clicking this little, um, these little arrows here, double click on this color, and we're going to pick a color that we like, some kind of blue today, I think. Um, but you can make it whatever color you want. It might be easier just to make it blue for the purposes of this tutorial. And uh, just pick whatever color you like, click OK. And then you're going to go to the top left section of your canvas and click and hold and drag it down to the bottom right section. Now if your, if your edges look a little bit um, more round or less round, um, that's affected by this radius up here. Mine's set to 20 pixels but you can change that to whatever you'd like um, but if so once you set that then you can redraw your rectangle and it will have the corresponding um, radius for the corners so now what we're gonna do is actually um, make it so that there's a gradient overlaying the shape and so it'll just be a very subtle gradient and it'll add a little bit of uh, depth and make it pop just a little bit more so we're gonna double click on the shape layer and we're gonna go to gradient overlay and then we're going to click on this actual gradient here. Don't click on this drop down section here. That'll bring you up with this. Uh, we don't actually want that. What we want is to click on the actual gradient and change the colors. So this is where the darker gradient will be. The darker side of the gradient will be. If we double click right on this little um, anchor here. And then I'm going to go down and select the actual blue that we started with. And then if you make it just a little bit darker than the blue that we started with, and click OK and then on the other side click the white side double click that again go down select the blue that we started with and uh, make it a little bit lighter this time a little bit lighter than what we started with click OK click OK again and click OK one more time and now you'll see that our shape has a uh, slight blue gradient it's pretty subtle but you wanna subtlety is the key when when we're doing web design you'll hear me say that a lot in my videos and I really believe that subtlety is the key of web design because um, if you try a little bit too hard, if, if things are too drastic or too severe, um, a lot of times it just your website just ends up looking um, too over the top. And if everything's very subtle, it gives you a nice clean, nice professional look. So we've got this subtle gr gradient now. And what we're going to do is go over to the uh, marquee tool. So we're going to select this, let go on that. And now what we're going to do is click uh, on the top left side click and drag down and so that we're selecting the top half of our shape of our button here so once you feel like you're about halfway you can let go and you can see these uh... we've got the selection here so now what we're gonna do is create a new layer right down here if you're in your layers panel go down click new layer and it should come right on top of the button that we're already working on so now what we're gonna do is select the brush tool and make it so that our brush brush size is about 80 or 70 or 80 pixels, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mine's set to 78, and so that's good. Make sure that your hardness is all the way down so that you have a very soft brush. If it was all the way up to 100, it would just be a, a harsh circle like this, but when it's set all the way down to zero, it's a very soft brush, just like this. So we're going to click out of that, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, go down to the left side of our canvas and just so that the brush is barely um, overlapping where the, the marquee tool is selected, we're going to click, hold our shift button, and drag all the way to the right side of our canvas. Now Command D to deselect that, and you can see that we've got this nice kind of effect going on here, but it's a little bit too strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our, again to our layer panel, layers panel, and we're going to click the opacity section, and this little drop down here, and we're going to lower it down all the way down to 30 percent 
and that's looking pretty good. We have a, a very subtle, again, subtlety is the key, very subtle white gradient on the top half of our button here. So now the important thing to realize is that we can't really see it, but there is, um, the gradient goes all the way over to the right side and all the way over to the left. And if we're going to put this on a website, we don't want anything beyond where the button's going to be. So what we're going to do is going to make sure we're on that white gradient layer, press Command T to transform, and we're just going to click and drag it over so that it comes right up to the end of where the button is going to end. Command Enter to commit that, and uh, now we're all set with that. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit, and to do that, you can uh, click your your zoom, your little magnifying glass down here, or just press the Z button on your keyboard, and we're going to click, make sure that the scrubby zoom is not clicked, click and drag, and we'll just zoom in right over here, and we're going to minimize our layers panel for the time being, just so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Now we're going to go to the text tool, and we're going to make sure that we're using a font that we like. I'm, I'm using Helvetica Regular, and I have about 30, my uh, font size is about 30 pixels. So we're going to click right on the right on the button, and we're going to type whatever we want our button to say. So I'm going to say, get in touch. And um, press our move tool, and just move it over to where we like it. Uh, I'm going to move it, uh, we could do it right in the middle, um, and we'd pretty much be all set. You, I mean, you can tell that the button's already looking good. Um, and so if you'd like, you can you can stop watching right now, but I'm going to show you um, a couple of more steps to make this button stand out a little bit more and just look even more professional and polished. So we're going to click it and uh, move it a little bit over to the left side. And now what we're going to do is go back to our type tool, click right at the end of our type, right at the end of where it says get in touch, and we're going to go up to our font, and we're going to go to webdings. It's a type of font, and it's actually... Um, what it is, is it's uh, just a series of symbols so that you can easily create symbols without having to draw them. Um, so once we have Webdings selected, we can press the number 4 on our keyboard. And in Webdings language, or whatever you want to call it, um, number 4 is the right, right side arrow. So we can see that um, we've drawn a little arrow here, and it's spaced out uh, just the way we, we want it. Um, we didn't have to put a space in here. It's already got some space included. So we're going to go to our Move tool and just move this over just so that it's right in the middle and where I can actually at this point we're gonna zoom out so command minus will uh, zoom you out and I'll press that three times and just press spacebar and um, click with my mouse to move this over and we're gonna go back to our layers panel and to just to make sure that this is right in the center of the button we're gonna click the the uh, the text layer and we're gonna hold down the command button on our keyboard and click our shape layer and we're gonna go to the top here and we're going to click this um, this center button right here. And you can see there's a, a square and a rectangle, and they're perfectly centered right over a line here. That'll allow us to get our text right in the center of our button. Um, and that's that's a good trick. If you ha if you didn't know that, that's a good thing to know in the future. Um, it's very important if you're making websites and you th need things to be perfectly centered. Um, so now things are looking pretty good here and again you know this might be all you need and you can stop watching now but I'm going to move forward a little bit low a little bit more so I'm gonna double click on my shape layer and what I'm gonna do now is click on this inner glow button the inner, inner glow section right here and what that's gonna do is add this little inner glow but right now it's too soft so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna change the blend mode to normal we're going to change our opacity to 100% and then change our color to the darkest part of our button. So just go down to the bottom of the button with your eyedropper, click on it, and press OK. So now you can see we have this inner glow that's a little bit darker going around our, our button. But it's still a little bit too, um, too soft. So what I'm going to do is go down to the size and make the size um, just 3. That's good. And that's actually looking pretty good. Um, and so it's very, again, it's very subtle. Um, web design is an art of subtlety, in my opinion. So we click OK. And, you know, we could just have this nice little soft effect going on here, around here. Now we're going to double click uh, our shape layer one more time. We're actually going to add a stroke. Um, and so it'll start off with a three pixel stroke. We only want uh, one pixel, or maybe two, actually. Um, we're going to double click the color. 
and we're going to make it the uh, we're going to go to the lightest part of our button and click there click OK and we're actually we're going to make it one pixel click OK and so again you know it, it may not be you know something that you feel like you need to do but I in my opinion this inner glow here and the stroke really allow this button to pop out um, and stand out a little bit more and the final thing that we're going to do with this button is we're going to double click on our text and bring up the layer style for that and now this is a trick that I use all the time it's very important in web design in my opinion because it allows your text to really blend with whatever background you're using so whenever you have a title or a button or uh, things like that you can use this and it'll, it'll help blend your text so we're gonna go to drop shadow and usually people use drop shadow like this um, you know, and so it looks like the text is kind of standing a little bit away from the background or whatever. But what I want to do is go in and change the blend mode to normal, um, and change the color. Double click on the color, or just click on the color, and we're gonna click the darkest blue that we've got here. And we're actually gonna make it a very dark blue. We're gonna, we're not gonna go with the color of the button. We're gonna go with something much darker, almost black. Click OK, and change the opacity to 100 and the distance to 1 and the size to 1 and we're going to change the angle to 90 percent so what that actually does it just adds this very very subtle you wouldn't notice it if you didn't if you weren't looking for it but this very subtle drop shadow and it just allows the text to look like it's embedded within the um, within the button itself and you know in my opinion it's it's an important thing to learn how to do it just makes your sites look a little bit more professional so now we're looking really good um, the buttons all set everything's centered everything's the color we want it to be you can use any colors you want by the way but any font you want but this is what I have chose for this tutorial and so the final thing is just to go up to image and go to trim and it'll say based on and we want to say based on transparent pixels and um, that should be the default, but if it's not, click this first selection here, click OK, and it's going to trim our canvas right down to where the button starts. And so that the whole canvas is just centered around this button. There's no extra space. Um, and so now I've got this beautiful um, button ready to go. It's very glossy and very Web 2.0. Um, and in my opinion, it's a great thing to have in your, uh, in your arsenal when you're going to make a website. Um, so hopefully this was helpful, guys. I'm going to get into some more tutorials. And uh, again, if you want to, you know, um, get me get more into detail in any part of that, just write in the comments. Let me know if I missed something or if something was confusing. Just let me know. Um, but that's it for today, guys. And be on the lookout for some more videos and subscribe if you want. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.